Hello, I'm Dale Meyer. Welcome again to SEMCAST. Joining us is Dr. Charles Arendt. He's a professor of systematic theology at Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis and has recently been the prime author of a new document for our church's Commission on Theology and Church Relations. The document is titled, Together with All Creatures, Caring for God's Living Earth. Welcome back, Dr. Aaron. Thank These you. are stimulating discussions. And uh, you said you'd like to talk about delighting in God's creation. I mentioned watching that robin go, uh, take yeah. down the worm. Well, that robin the next morning at 3.30 is always chirping with all the other birds. He's delighting in God's <laughs> creation. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do it at that time of the day, but talk I thought about you were this up delight. 4:30. 4:30. I'm a late sleeper. Well, I, I think the reason I wanted to develop this section in particular was a lot of times in the environmental movement, we're always confirmed with, you know, we have to act now, or this crisis is going to overwhelm us, you know, destroy the earth. Um, but what about the joy in carrying out this task. And here I do think, though, there is uh, an issue we need to address. Um, in our modern world, we've become more and more distant and isolated from God's natural world or God's uh, creation. Uh, when I think about myself, I can get a, um, leave my house in the morning, go down to the uh, garage that's attached to the house, hop in the car, go to the store. 15 seconds, I'm outside, I'm in the store. Um, we live our entire lives pretty much in artifacts of our own construction. Someone once said that we live in synthetic cocoons of our own making almost. What if you live in uh, the canyons of New York or Chicago or Los Angeles? Probably the same situation there. And I wonder how many people, and like our parents or grandparents, you know, can they even name the, the, the kinds of trees, the kinds of plants in the neighborhood. How many can even see the stars at night anymore? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about that before we came on, on the air. And my first church and your first church were very close together. They were in the same pastoral circuit. Right. And, and for me, I was just having, having grown up just outside of Chicago, I was gaga when I saw all the stars because there was no light pollution. Right. And I never realized, I mean, even even to this day, oh, if, if I could go back there and just watch those stars with the light pollution out of the way. I know, I agree. The they're, they're wonderful. I can see Orion from my house here, but that's about it. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I just think that there's a need for us, in order to care for God's creation, we need to know it once again, become familiar with it. I know I'm sort of surprised and sad, and even with myself at times, how, I can, how I've gone through much of my life oblivious to the migrating birds passing overhead, oblivious to all the different creatures that God has made. And that doesn't seem quite right. I mean, think about it. God made us as creatures with five senses. And the purpose was so that we could interact fully with all of creation. Sights, smells, sounds, touch, you name it. Uh, migrating birds, why do they fly? In, they fly in a V, but it's not always an equal-sided V. You know, somebody explain that to me, and I don't remember what it is. But, but there's a real delight there. And, and I find it humbling. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, I'm just, I'm just a part of this. I'm a special part. That's I'm right. baptized. The birds weren't baptized. That's right. I've got a rational soul. Our, our dog, God love him, doesn't have a rational thinking, right. thinking ability. But uh, wow. Yeah, and so the, the, everything we've done in our modern life has um, tended to isolate us or distance us, you might say, from the wider creation. So there's a sense where, and I'll put it this way, everything tends to look the same when you think about going from one city to another. Um, you have the same McDonald's, you have the same Walmarts, every city is starting to look uh, alike. Uh, everything is starting to look the same, and as a result, we miss the diversity of cultures. You know, you've got some of a Midwest culture that arises out of the farmland. You've got an East Coast culture that's perhaps tied to um, uh, the ocean and seafood. You have a Mediterranean culture. Um, all this is part of the diversity of God's creation that I think we can at times uh, overlook or ignore. What are, what are some of the things that, practical things that you might suggest to us as, as we get into this topic? about delighting in creation? What, what simple yeah, things can a person do? I think there are a number of things. One is um, 
as, as simple as gardening. Nothing perhaps connects you back to the earth like gardening. You discover that you have to work with a schedule that's not your own, depending upon the rain, depending upon the seasons. You start discovering the interconnection of everything in terms of what is it that makes healthy soil, the, the role of worms, the role of insects, how everything is kind of uh, interconnected. You begin learning about um, native plants in terms of what provides food and habitat for the various creatures that pass through. In my case, I get to learn every year through gardening, which I love, about poison ivy. That's, this yep. is This is fall yeah, in creation, yeah. buddy. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and if it, I've often thought, because I get it every year and I get it bad, I thought if it weren't for doctors and the medical community, which has taken other you know, mm -hmm. chemicals and, and whatever it is to create medicines, that's also God's... Yeah, and those medicines often come from plants. Yeah, you being know, being used to cure my wandering into yeah, the poison ivy you're patch. Right. So we never, there's a certain ambivalence in which we live. On the one hand, we have this groaning creation that's dangerous to us. At the other same time, it's a creation that God continues to provide us with food, with um, refreshment, you might say. I mean, why is it, for example, that people uh, find certain tranquility when they go out uh, outdoors or find a certain uh, peacefulness? Or why is it that people are attracted to animals? Uh, and then when you see uh, either a bird or an animal you haven't seen before, that it sort of uplifts our spirits. When uh, uh, we, t we talked about the congregations where you and I first started mm -hmm. out in central, southern Illinois, southern Illinois, um, it was a farming congregation. Right. And so the farmers spent their whole day uh, raising uh, crops, and a lot of the crops were uh, used for cattle. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they, they didn't come home and garden. That's right. Yeah, so we, we had a fellow, so when Diane and I, coming from the city, got down there, we started gardening, we put in a lot of flowers. And the farmers wondered, you know, you can't <laughs> eat that, why would you do that? But there was a guy in town who came by and he said, something for the eyes as well as something for the stomach. Exactly. And that was, that was delight. And many a time I've been in the garden, and I think of the wonderful old hymn, Oh, that I had a thousand voices. And the one stanza says, Ye forest leaves so green and tender that dance for joy in summer air. Ye oh, meadow nice. grasses bright and slender. Ye flowers so wondrous, sweet and fair. Ye live to show his praise alone with me. I'll make his glory known. Oh, very nice. Yeah, in other words, you know, we often think of God providing us with food and shelter through creation. But we don't always think of him providing us with uh, psychological um, uh, refreshment or joy. Uh, through creation as well. And I think that's a way by which we can interpret when people say, well, I sort of sense God in creation. Well, yeah, God approaches us through creation to renew us in various ways. And we won't get into this now because we're going to wrap this, this uh, segment up and, and prepare uh, for the next one for our, for our viewers. But uh, we had talked that the Sabbath day was intended not only to spend time for Israel to spend time in the study of the Torah, but also to just sit out and enjoy God's good creation. Absolutely, and we'll come back to that in the final segment as well. Okay, with, with that as a, a, a promotion for the next one, I want to thank you, Chuck. Uh, Dr. Aaron's expertise is really stimulating. We appreciate him here at Concordia Seminary and know that you are appreciating the, the knowledge that he is sharing with us. Look forward to seeing you the next time. And that will be the last chapter in this great special series on God's creation and our part in it. See you next time.